Okay, this time I'm gonna set up one of my little cameras here to see if I can get some footage at a different a different view. Because with the cam the big camera up above, I have a hard time trying to my hands are in the way, you don't see much. So if I can get over to the other side. So let's see if I can set it up over here. That way. I'm try to keep my hands out of the way. So I'm gonna start that one. So the little one is is going. And the first thing I'm gonna do is trim off these ends. <coughs> Might need my trimmer for that. <laughs> the wire snippers. And the first thing I'm gonna do is trim off the ends here. So the little one is is going. And the first thing I'm gonna do is trim off these ends. <coughs> Might need my trimmer for that. <laughs> wire snippers and the first thing I want to do is trim off the ends here clean them up and cut that end off actually I'm gonna leave that end on right for now now I'm gonna take a razor blade and I'm gonna to try to pick out like a loop and a half to two loops and it's kind of hard to do when you can't see very well. I should be wearing that uh, Magda viewer or whatever it's called. I bought one and then I don't wear it. All right, so I got both blades in the same and I just fold it down and then fold this one back a little bit. And there we got our first, we got our first loop here. Got the first loop. <clears throat> Let's see, I don't think I zoomed you in over here. Uh, right here is where I want to be. Okay. <clears throat> so I got the first loop. Now I'm going to measure over approximately about 700 thousandths from the center line of that. Actually, the spring is going to be about just about the right length if I trim the end off and fold the and fold the end down. So I thought it, was, it looked extra long when I was winding it, but apparently not. So I'm going to trim off. I'm going to try to trim off this. Uh, tab or whatever you want to call it on the end here I want to get it as short as I can like that now we'll do the same thing I got the loop laying down flat down on the other side so I'm going to just lay a scale on that kind of keep it and then I'm going to try to pick out make a loop and a half to two loops. Insert the razor blade. Fold the razor blade down. Fold the other blade back a little bit. And there we go. We got a tension spring. So now we'll move the motor over here closer so that I can see it. So that I can see it. And we'll go over here and get you situated. And we're going to put this camera hmm. not a very good view. Of it. Hopefully it'll 
So I've got a little scribe here to, to uh, aid me in getting the loops over the ends of the pins. If you hold your tongue just right, you get it. <laughs> My wife always tells me, is that sticking your tongue out make it work better? And I go, sometimes. <laughs> All right, I got that one. That one was pretty easy. The first one always is a little easy. On, on the other two, I had the same thing. Now, the second one is a little more, a little more tricky getting that up on top of the pin. Once you get it on top of the pin, ah, I had it there. It's not the easiest thing to, uh, to do. My fingers are too big, and I'm sure this camera over here is getting nothing but the back of my hand right now. Okay, I've got it laying on top. I think I got it. I think it snapped into place. <clears throat> the nail is the right, just the right size, that finish nail, for these springs, winding these springs, the spring back and everything. It's it's uh, perfect. You know, if I wanted that motor to run slow, I'd just have one spring on it. Well, we'll see. We'll put two on right away, and then if that's running too fast, well, if it, <laughs> let me let me rephrase that. If it runs, <laughs> no, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure I can get it to run. Uh, I mean, take some tinkering around with it, but, but yeah, it, uh, because the lighter the spring, the, the slower it's, it'll run, the slower RPM I can get to, but that, because that feels pretty good right there, <clears throat> but I'm going to go wind another one, and we'll put it on this side, and do the same thing as what I've done here, so I'll be back when I get the springs on and uh, we'll start uh, something else. Um, probably make uh, the little bracket for the push rod for the magnet. I'll have to figure out where to put it and then it'll have to have a little screw in it to lock it in position. Oh, I need to make the nut back here too. Maybe that's what I'll do. Make the lock nut for the push rod so that I can get that length set correctly and uh, lock it down because I was just going to make a brass nut, a thin brass nut to, uh, to lock it. I just don't like the idea. Well, that nut is going to have to have a flange on it. That's all there is to it to slide into the because if you end up kitty corner with the nut then it won't won't slide in the push rod guide so, unless I mill part of that push rod guide away which let me see here be about an eighth of an inch. You know, I could do that. Take that push rod guide and mill the front away from it, off of it. It doesn't need to be that long. It's not, it doesn't really serve a purpose out there. Not at all. I wish I'd have known that because I would have cut that pocket a little less than too. Huh. I'll have to think about it. So Let's see if I can 
trying to show you what I'm looking at. It's the, the push rod, um, the push rod guide here. I could build that back a ways so that this surface of the cam follower never goes under the front edge of, of that. That way the lock nut could go, I don't have to worry about the lock nut sliding in unless, you know, because if I have that lock nut corner to corner, you know, at an angle, it's not going to slide through there. Well, the only way I'd be able to adjust that would be to put shim washers underneath until I got it correct. It'd be, it'd be uh, better to cut that off. It basically right about where I got that radius on there so I can cut it right back to that radius it's and like I say it's not gonna hurt anything it doesn't need to have that much that much slide area if I had even this raised up area here if it just had that well no it might tend to tip then but I'll, I'll uh, work on that. I'll make the nuts first and then we'll see what we got. All right? So, so I'll be back. Okay, I have the governor uh, levers and stuff all figured out on both of them. I ended up putting a ball bearing in on the, on the, um, rocker arm. I put a ball bearing over here and flattened out this end. If I was to make it over and was making it, I would put the ball on the on the push rod and I would have this surface flat. I would not put a ball cup in that side. But I did it that way and it'll work. And in the lever, this lever back here, I ended up having to modify the heck out of that. Um, I can't see there. Let's see if I can get to an up and down shot here. All right. So this area right here, over here, on the drawing comes down at an angle. Well, that hits that hits your uh, weights and uh, bracket. So I almost went straight across. I whittled on it, whittled on it. That was the first thing. Then when I got that, then this uh, notch back here was much too high. Uh, it was way too high. So I cut that down. Then I come to find that this surface, front surface here, was cut too far back. So I had to add 50 thou to that. I can see if I can turn it to the high spot and engage it with my fingers whoop okay so I engaged the I engaged the lever right now and you can see it's, there's plenty that it's that it's uh, gripping on but I had to do this to both of them and this one here when I came in and milled this I got this at a little bit of an angle which really doesn't hurt it could this whole this lever doesn't need to be that long it could be cut off right there so on my set of drawings on and my PDFs and my model, I'm going to take and cut this off and I'm going to try to get some of these dimensions and put on my drawing so that if I ever come to make and want to make another one, I don't have to fiddle around. I've got, I'll have the dimensions correct for it. Plus, uh, the spool back here, I made it just a tad loose on that and that was enough to where I didn't have enough to uh, see now it's back out to um, engage and disengage so all of this is kind of done now so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this take the bearing caps off lift that out of there and take this bushing out on this side and I'm going to make that bushing so it sticks out a quarter to 
three sixteenths of an inch out because that's where my adjustable um, timing will be and um, I'm going to do that on both of them and then uh, while I have that off and um, well no that's never mind that I was thinking that I had to uh, <clears throat> you know they're talking about putting uh, putting it uh, on the right tooth and not if you're not getting it right resoldering the valve uh, timing and and everything that's because the the ignition timing is incorporated in that in that cam and now that I don't have that incorporated in that cam I can take this gear and loosen it up and adjust it to wherever I need to adjust it the uh, ignition timing will be over here on its own basically on its own circuit or system so so that did away with uh, doing this will do away with that uh, trying to get it on the right tooth and all that baloney <laughs> I say baloney but it worked for him so I can't say it's baloney you know it I mean it I've always said if it works that's all it counts so anyway if it works and looks good <laughs> try to make things look good um, but anyway I'll make the bushings for these two for, for this one and, th and this I'm not going to remake this bushing, just just the one over here, and then uh, I didn't line bore though. Oh no, I wouldn't have. I would have never line bored the bushing. Uh, I would have line bored where the bushing fits in, because um, that's a bad habit. If you get in the habit of of having a bushing, two bushings in something, and you have them clamped down, and then line bore the bushings. You're asking for trouble because of the bushing turns, then you're out of alignment. You want to, you know, you want to line bore where the bushings are going to sit, not line bore the bushings. It's just a little tidbit. I worked with a, a fella, and he just couldn't comprehend that, what was wrong with clamping it down and then line boring the, the bushing and on stuff and. I gave up on them, <laughs> as, as so did uh, some of my co-workers. Anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that off. Let's see, Allen Ranch here. I'm bumping the tripod, ain't I? I do have these labeled, don't I? Yep, one. Yeah, I have them labeled over here on this side. I have them stamped. Uh, stamped going forward but I don't have one and two so I'm just going to take the scribe and I'm going to scratch oops <laughs> the lens cap uh, I'm going to scratch a little mark here a witness mark so that I know that this cap goes on this side Although it shouldn't matter, but all right, now let's take it loose and see if we can pop it out of there. All you can see is my thumbs and fingers. I'm looking right straight down at it almost, so. with the camera that is and these uh, bushings have a flange on the inside to keep the, the um, crank in the right spot so here yeah. and then plus this was made out of oil light I'm gonna make it out of just brass well, that one was loose. That one was on a little on the loose side there. Why four is that? So is that one. Must have had that off at one time and then didn't retighten it. Oh, 
they'll just do this one first and see if it's gonna if it's looking feasible there we go that over there lift that up I might have to nope. nope I can get it all right I'm just gonna leave that set like that and I'm gonna go duplicate this bushing in brass instead of oil light this is oil light right yep that's oil light the reason I can tell it's oil light you got uh, little pit holes in it but I don't really think I need to do that with brass I'm gonna put a I'm gonna build it I mean out of oil light I'm gonna put an oil hole in through there and then I'll just scratch some oil grooves in the brass you know so I'll basically take a scribe or something and scratch a spherical groove in there and then make sure that's at the top and when I drill my oil hole so that it intersects that and then I'm gonna put an oil cap on oil feeder on both of them on the top on the top of the the cap the rod cap so I'm just gonna go over the lathe do some turning and then I'll be back when I'm ready to reinstall okay I got a bushing made and I took a, a router bit a router and in, in uh, the oil hole that I put in and I routered a little I routered a little groove in the inside out to about there and then to the inside so that'll take care of the oil passage and when I put this together I just want to make sure that that's pointing up so that when I put the hole in the cap that we can line everything up just yeah. so I'm gonna try to get this back together hmm This has got to go over. Let's pull this back so that it can get over. This ain't the best way to put it together, that's for sure. <laughs> There we go. Just all of a sudden fell into place. So I want that straight up. I want that hole straight up. I should just go drill and tap that hole in there right away. I put it in the center, that oil cap, or that oil passage. And I'm not sure what they call out in the book for an oil cup. <clears throat> They're calling out. I know I've seen them that they were listed in there. I thought they were. Oh yeah, right here they are, oiler. They're calling out uh, 1032. So, do I want to go that big? I don't think so. I want to go like a 632. I think that's what I'll do. I'm going to drill a hole in here, 632. Right there. Well, I'm just going to put it together for now. I can um, later decide what kind of oil cup I'm going to put in and then take this off and go ahead and do it. Or I could even just leave it on here and do it while it's assembled. As long as I have the, this hole in the right position up. 
I want it almost straight up and down and it's right about there because when I clamp it it's going to pinch it anyway Let's see I get a screw in there Turn them up so they're just snug holding it. Now get the other one on on the other side, and that's I. This is an oil light bushing, so I don't really need to to uh, put oil passages or anything in that one. The, it's centered bronze is basically what it is, so it has many oil passages. <laughs> I do have that. Oh, see, I put that cap on wrong. I'm not paying attention here. That's, I, don't, I have it backwards. So let's take it back off. Put that in the right way, because that might, might not line up with that bottom diameter. What? Eh, should be all damn close, but but I put those marks on there for a reason. So listen. it goes this way. I got forward marks on there. Then we'll I'll make the bracket for the the timing next, which will mount on this what we're installing right now. And if this actually if I don't get enough pinch on it and this turns, I'll put a little pin on the bottom that'll engage into that bushing, you know, like twenty thou or so, and that'll keep it from moving. It'll be pinned then. Right. Come on. But I'm thinking there, oop, there'll be enough pinch that it is not going to go anywhere. Just so I didn't go too tight on the ID. No, it's fine. It is fine. How about shake this way? Yeah, it's probably about five thou, or if that. It's not much. So I got that flange pretty close to what I need to. Tighten these up. Make them good and snug. Yep. All right. So now we're gonna have, have to uh, design and uh, make the piece that goes on here. It's basically what I'm thinking is I'm gonna get a piece of paper here. I saved a lot of old scrap paper from. My former employment in, well, actually, it's a book on my uh, CAD system that I had at work, and I don't need it anymore. <laughs> so, all right, so here's what I'm kind of thinking that it'll look like. Looking, looking in the end of the crank, it'll look like this and the handle will come up here with a knurled knob on it and then it'll come like that and then right 
Yeah, right about here, it's going to come down. And it's going to come back up. Like that, like that, like that. Oops, wrong way. Come up here like that. And it's, so... I'm not very good at drawing 3D at all, <laughs> as you can tell. Uh, I'm trying to fix it. Now oh, this is solid here. So... Anyway, it would be like that, and this would this would screw all the way through. This would be where the hall effect sensor, and then to the hall. And, uh, well, you're not seeing any of it, darn it. Yeah. So this handle would screw in, this would mount on that shaft, and the hall effect would sit in here and then this handle would be like, it'd be like a, a pinch, uh, I can't remember what the, those clamps are called, but it'd be, it'd clamp onto that. So you can loosen the knob and adjust it. And like I say, the Hall effect sensor would sit right here. That's where it would reside, right in there, on the tab that I leave on there. And I could leave that tab any old where. I could put it over here if I wanted, leave a tab. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Be so anyway, that's the plan. I got, I'm going to go and put it in CAD. Be back later. <laughs>